Hey everybody, this is Rishi, and today I wanted to talk about chronic consolidation. So when you see a consolidation on the first study a patient has, then this is a quick and dirty differential that a lot of people use, which is blood, pus, and water. So hemorrhage, pneumonia, and pulmonary edema. But if a patient comes back and has been treated for pneumonia or has been treated with Lasix and four weeks later they still have the same consolidation, then you have to start changing the differential into things that can cause chronic consolidation, and those would be cells, protein, inflammation, and pus. Let's talk about this differential in a little more detail. I came up with this mnemonic of space V to touch on some of the major things that will cause a chronic consolidation. So this is not a comprehensive list, but it's a pretty good list for capturing most of the things that will cause a chronic consolidation. So the S stands for sarcoid. P is pneumonia, and in the P there's, eight, there's three kinds, atypical pneumonia, organizing pneumonia, and lipoid pneumonia. A stands for atelectasis, i.e. round atelectasis. C is for cancer, both lung and lymphoma. E is for eosinophilic pneumonia. And V is for vasculitis. So sarcoid is a disease that affects multiple different tissues in the body where you have deposition of these non-caseating granulomas. And many patients don't have symptoms, but if they do have symptoms, it's mostly from lung disease and the cause is unknown. And the classic appearance of sarcoid in the lungs is a perilymphatic distribution of nodules in the mid to upper lungs. And when I say perilymphatic distribution, I mean that the nodules are clustered along the bronchovascular bundles and along the fissures, okay? I have another video talking about the distribution of nodules and how to tell between central lobular random and perilymphatic if you wanna learn more about that. In some cases of sarcoid, the appearance is not of these multiple tiny nodules, but of these larger mass-like areas of consolidation. And what this actually represents is a huge conglomeration of multiple tiny nodules. And if you look at the periphery of this mass, what you'll see are multiple tiny nodules. And one year later, you could see it even better. There's multiple tiny nodules at the periphery of this mass. And some people call this the galaxy sign. Okay, so this is another way that sarcoid can present other than tiny nodules. And here is another example in which the abnormality isn't so dense, but it's more ground glass in appearance. But if you look closely, you could still see that it's made up of multiple tiny little nodules rather than being a single consolidation or a single ground glass opacity. And here's another example on plain film in which there was a large left upper lobe consolidation that one month later after treatment for pneumonia was still there. And you can see now that there is an opacity in the right lung as well. And this is what it looked like on CT. And on biopsy, this turned out to be sarcoid. The P stands for pneumonia. And remember, there's three types of pneumonia in this mnemonic atypical pneumonia, lipoid pneumonia, and organizing pneumonia. And for atypical pneumonia, there's many different things that can cause an atypical pneumonia with a chronic consolidation. The prototypical one is TB, but you can also think about things like chronic necrotizing aspergillus and other fungal infections. But for, for TB, primary TB, which is infection after the first exposure, usually presents as a consolidation in the lung, particularly in adults, okay? And these consolidations can take a long time to resolve, especially if you're not treating them with the appropriate antibiotics. And lymphadenopathy is common in these patients, especially in kids. And here's just another example. So most of the time when you see uh, TB in the lungs, not only might you have consolidation, but frequently you'll have tree and bud opacity because if you remember the infection spreads through the airways so you'll have mucus plugging and tree and bud opacity in multiple areas and this patient also has cavitation this is three months after the baseline in which you can see the patient is intubated so the next type of pneumonia i want to talk about is lipoid pneumonia and this is simply buildup of fats in the air spaces which get taken up by macrophages and it's usually exogenous from the aspiration of mineral oil that patients take in order to relieve constipation 
Lipoid pneumonia will look like single or multiple areas of consolidation, and they can look mass-like, they can be spiculated, and it can look like cancer like it does in these cases. So what is key is to look on the soft tissue windows and observe this uh, macroscopic fat. So if you see areas of fat within the consolidation, that is a very helpful sign, although it's not always seen. Typically, you'll also see some other signs of aspiration like ground glass opacity and tree and bud opacity. And here's another example in which it looks a little bit more spiculated. So, you know, these can, are often confused as lung cancers initially, but on follow-up, they don't really get that much bigger, and on soft tissue windows, they have fat. Okay? So the next pneumonia I want to talk about is organizing pneumonia. And organizing pneumonia is just a response that the lung has to certain injuries. And those injuries can have many causes, infection, radiation, drugs, there's a whole list of them. And it's, sometimes it's very difficult to tell what the inciting event is. But pathologically, what you have is granulation tissue that collects in the air spaces, and you have inflammation in the surrounding interstitium. So on CT, there are a few different classic appearances. Um, what is usually described is peripheral and peribronchial consolidation, and it sometimes has this perilobular pattern. So in this example here, there is consolidation surrounding the central um, bronchovascular bundles. And then the perilobular pattern is when you have uh, consolidation that surrounds this, uh, these secondary pulmonary lobules. This is called a perilobular pattern. Okay? You can also have small, ill-defined nodules. You can have large nodules and masses. You can see something called the atoll sign, which this would be an atoll over here in which you have a peripheral area of consolidation and central area of ground glass opacity and occasionally you can, only, you can only see ground glass opacity. Here's a patient who had radiation for this left upper lobe lung cancer, and one month later had extensive bilateral consolidation. Notice that it's not just in the area that had the cancer and that was radiated, but bilaterally as well. And, one, and two months later, you could see that it went away for the most part with some ground glass remaining, and if we follow this patient later, then even this ground glass opacity will go away. And here's another example where it's peripheral predominant. So at baseline, we had a peripheral area of consolidation. One month later, that consolidation went away, but we had another separate area of consolidation. And three months later, you could see that that went away, but we had another separate area of consolidation even more immediately. Okay, the A stands for atelectasis. So atelectasis is not really consolidation, but sometimes it can be confused for consolidation if it's round atelectasis. Okay, round atelectasis is simply a special case of atelectasis in which the abnormality is due to an abnormality in the pleura. And what happens is the lung kind of is tethered to the pleura, and then it wraps around in kind of a circular motion causing this kind of um, rounded appearance or comet tail appearance. So there's a few different things that you should look out for when you have round atelectasis. Um, one is that your abnormality should abut the pleural surface, like in this case. The second thing is that the pleural surface that's next to the atelectasis should be abnormal in some way, either pleural thickening or effusions. The third thing is you want to see other signs of volume loss. So in this case, there's inferior retraction of the major fissure. And then the fourth thing is something called the comet tail sign. So the comet tail is simply a swirling of vessels and bronchi leading into the atelectatic lung. Another helpful sign is that if you have contrast on board, the atelectasis will enhance uniformly with contrast as opposed to pneumonia, which will enhance heterogeneously. So here's another example in which at baseline and six months later, this rounded area of opacity was unchanged. And you could see that the pleura is abnormal when we compare it to the other side. There's pleural thickening and there's thickening of the extra pleural fat as well. The C stands for cancer. And there's two kinds of cancer I want to talk about. The first is lymphoma. And you can have lymphoma in the lung that's primary, which is rare, 
or secondary, which is more common. So in the lung, can lymphoma will present as nodules, masses, or consolidations with air bronchograms. That's the classic appearance, but it can also be an alveolar or interstitial opacity. For example, in this case, there was an area of ground glass opacity with some intralobular septal thickening in the left upper lobe, and you can see that that did not change one month later. And on the contralateral lung, you can see that there is a central nodule with surrounding ground glass and some septal thickening, and that was stable one month later, and this was pulmonary lymphoma. Here's another example in which you have multiple consolidations with air bronchograms, and this would be a classic appearance, so a consolidation with an air bronchogram. And here's another example in which you have an area of consolidation in the lingula, some nodules, some masses, but notice that all of these have air bronchograms in them. Okay, the next cancer is mucinous adenocarcinoma, and this is a primary lung cancer, and it's a subtype of adenocarcinoma in which you have mucin production. Um, on pathology, there's abundant intracytoplasmic mucin, and you have these tall columnar cells on histology. So on CT, what it'll look like are progressive areas of consolidation, either single or multiple. And like lymphoma, you can have air bronchograms, but not all the time. It can be multifocal. You can have subsolid portions, and it can present as not just a consolidation, but a mass or a nodule. So you can see this is an area of consolidation with multiple small nodules, and both of these areas represented mucinous adenocarcinoma. And here's another example of a patient who had interstitial lung disease, and on their surveillance for interstitial lung disease, they had a new consolidation, which was called pneumonia. At two months later, you could see that that didn't really go away, so the specter of lung cancer was raised, and it got even bigger at three months with new areas of disease. So this was a mucinous adenocarcinoma. And here's another example of a patient with consolidation and ground glass opacity. You can see that the ma major fissure is pulled down, so there is some volume loss here. And four months later, after treatment for pneumonia, that didn't really go away. Some of the ground glass opacity has become more dense, so this was a mucinous adenocarcinoma. So eosinophilic pneumonia is the E, and in particular, chronic eosinophilic pneumonia is the one that will present as a chronic consolidation. And the appearance of chronic eosinophilic pneumonia is peripheral upper low predominant consolidation. It's sometimes called the photographic negative of pulmonary edema because the airspace disease is at the periphery rather than perihilar. And the differential for this appearance would include eGPA, um, sometimes called Churg-Strauss disease, organizing pneumonia, and simple pulmonary eosinophilia. Okay. You can also have reticulation and nodules in the later stages of the disease. So here's another example in which you have peripheral consolidation, and this is why you can see that some people call it the photographic negative of pulmonary edema, and this case was from the literature. And the V stands for vasculitis. So there's a variety of different vasculitides that can affect the lung. These can be divided into large vessel vasculitis and small va vessel vasculitis. Probably the most common small vessel vasculitis that affects the lung is GPA or granulomatosis with polyangiitis. And the appearance of GPA is nodules, masses, and consolidation. And frequently within those areas of airspace disease, you'll have cavitation. Now, despite the multiple different varieties of appearances in the lung, one of the things that can help you make the diagnosis is if a patient has involvement of multiple organ systems, like in addition to the lungs, the sinuses, and the kidneys are involved, that should make you think of vasculitis. So this is a patient who had a lung resection, um, and they had this consolidation that showed up along the staple line. So of course, cancer was high in the differential, but two months later you could see that it got smaller and there's a little bit of cavitation here, and this is a case of GPA. These are two other patients with GPA in which you'll see nodules or masses with cavitation. All right, to summarize, if you see a chronic consolidation, then use this mnemonic, space V, sarcoid, pneumonia, 
atelectasis, cancer, eosinophilic, and vasculitis. And remember that there's three entities in the P, the pneumonia. There's atypical pneumonia, lipoid pneumonia, and organizing pneumonia. Finally, I wanted to point out my references. So this is a really good article about chronic airspace disease. So in this video, I just talked about chronic consolidation, but there's also a whole nother differential if you have a chronic ground glass opacity. So check out that article. Here's an article about pulmonary TB. This article is about all of the eosinophilic lung diseases, including chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, which I showed here. This is a really comprehensive article about the appearance of pulmonary vasculitis. And I used all of the pathology images I got from Dr. Yale Rosen, who's a pulmonary pathologist, and he has a huge trove of images on Flickr, as well as multiple that are captioned with descriptions. All right, if anybody has any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get to it. Thanks.